Hey everybody, welcome to a very special edition of the Klaus and Q Show live on ONTV. I'm Jason Klaus and sitting right next to me is my tag team partner in this particular endeavor, Quando Edwards. Q, we walked into the studio today. <laughs> and as you can tell by the layout, this is something totally new and different. Now, it is to... Because we're doing a new and different kind of show here tonight. Now, I know last month I said, kind of in the preview, that we were going to tackle a serious topic, a part two, if you will, of our previous conversation. Uh, as they say in real life and in the wrestling business, plans change. Cards subject to change. That's Keith. right. That's and right. That is on full display here. Because here tonight... And as we embark on the biggest weekend of the year, if you are a professional wrestling fan, Q and I are going to host a very special panel that will break down and preview the crown jewel of sports entertainment. I'm talking about WrestleMania. Now, Q, when I talk about WrestleMania, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Oh, man, spectacle. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a show of shows. I mean, they've been saying it all. Every Monday and Friday, it's the show of shows. Uh, but this is the biggest. This is the pretty much the Super Bowl of uh, professional wrestling. It's a big night for each and every superstar that's involved. It's a big night for for the fans. I mean, it's it's it's, it's a big night to just sit down with your family, enjoy some wrestling with your friends, uh, enjoy some wrestling, and just have a good time. You mentioned, you know, like the the big game for the NFL, their big championship game, and all the hoopla that goes into that. People have their parties and things of that nature. WrestleMania is no different. In fact, I'll go one further and say that what the presentation of WrestleMania is overall supersedes what you will see on a given Sunday afternoon in February. But be that as it may, I mean, because you got a little bit of everything, man. You got yeah. action, excitement, comedy, music, pyro. You've got it all. And it's on full display. And it's now become a two-night extravaganza. Actually, yep. three, three if you count what's happening later this evening on the various networks, either on, on national television or on Peacock. Uh, the Hall of Fame induction ceremony goes down here tonight. We'll talk about that later on in the program. We have two very special guests that are going to join us for this conversation and their Huge lifelong wrestling fans, and they are they are just as excited about this weekend and all of the things going on with WrestleMania as Q and I are. Welcome back to the show. Um, our good longtime personal friend Brian Balf is here, and with him is my longtime tag team partner in the wrestling business as well. And you can hear us every Wednesday over on the PFC Entertainment Network. I'm talking about power tripping through the 80s. Sean Krugel is with us. Sean, Brian, thanks so much for taking time out, being a part of this very special edition. Thanks for having us. Yeah, appreciate you inviting me on here. It's been a long time since, since you've been in here. It's been, a, it's been a minute, man. You guys got quite the setup here. I almost feel like uh, a chant of Jerry's going to break out. We're going to start beating <laughs> each other with chairs. This is crazy. <laughs> it is a cool setup, and it's very much more relaxed and, and things of this nature. And actually, if you want to be honest with you, it's because of you guys being here that this is the way things are right. this week. Uh, but be that as it may, it, it just really hammers home you know, the importance to us and to a lot of you who are tuning in here tonight of what WrestleMania is. Now, we're going to break this show down based on what has been presented to us in terms of the lineup for night one, night two. And this goes down, it starts tomorrow night uh, from SoFi Stadium in uh, Hollywood, California. They've gone Hollywood again for the first time since WrestleMania 21. Um, I feel like with the grandeur and the spectacle and the venue cue, like the last time they were in Hollywood, they were at the Staples Center. Yeah. Now they are in the 70,000 seat football stadium that is going to be hosting this thing. Have Has anybody seen the preview of the stage? There was yeah. one picture that yeah. was leaked. Uh, yesterday, I, I believe, and like, they actually did a video today. Oh, did they? Yeah, they did I did video not today. see the video. Yeah. I just saw like the one side shot of, of what the stage is going to look like. But by and large, um, make no mistake about it, that's part of the presentation of what makes WrestleMania so big, right? Is, oh, absolutely. Is the overall ambiance, the venue, the, the staging, the setup, the whole night. 
I, you know, as as promoters like Sean and I have been, and and performers, like we pay attention to those little details, right? That that's what makes a show bigger than just your normal show, right? It it's it is the overall presentation. Yeah, with with, with the pyro, the sounds, you know, the the smoke, the chants, you know, that that's what really gives you that feel. The only thing I'm hoping that they don't do at WrestleMania is that augmented reality stuff. You know, like with the oh. Roman Reigns, you know, doing his ooze thing. And, yeah. Uh, I think that really takes away from even the regular weekly shows. I, yeah. I hate that stuff. Yeah, I don't really like that either. I, I was torn on it when they first started introducing it. I was like, okay, they're going to use it, you know, periodically, maybe yeah. for the pay-per-views and for the bigger stars. But now it seems like everybody's Every. getting one. And yeah. you see it week in, week out. And, like, I... I understand what you're saying. Now, I, I don't think it bothers me as much as it does other people just because I'm used to it. Like, I've okay, this is what they're doing. This right, is the yeah. evolution of their presentation. Um, look, when you talk about WrestleMania, you talk about the absolute biggest stars in the business all culminate in this one event. And you got a formatting and lineup and how they have the show structured really plays a key in this, right, Brian? Because oh, yeah. it, you you got to start off strong. You kind of got to bury your weaker matches, and then you finish the night strong, right? So how big, as a fan, and, and I, I pick on you because you haven't been in, in the business, but, like, you're old enough to know how the business works. How important is the structure as a fan to your investment level into what you're watching especially when you when you consider we're looking at four hours per night easily i think the big thing is now it's the two days even so you have to end with something that's definitely going to make them want to tune in again the next day right so you got to start out strong you want to finish strong and then i think but like you said you can kind of float there in the middle but only so much and especially with being the show of shows you can't really have too much lax in there. When I first saw this card, I was like, I don't like a lot of these matchups. But when I start, like look at it a little bit like deeper, it's like there's a lot of potential in having a lot of matches of the year on this card. Q, you and I, um, huge Undertaker fans, right? Yes, sir. Um, I, I mentioned, and this ties into why I'm asking this, how big of a deal, how big of a difference in your your anticipation for WrestleMania has changed because he is no longer on the active roster? Uh, you know, it's it, it was, it's kind of weird with The Undertaker. I know uh, I was interested in, to, in the streak all the way up until the streak was broken. But the fact that he kept continuing to, uh, you know, further along his, his uh, streak at WrestleMania... <laughs> That kind of took away, took a lot away from me. Because um, once Brock ended the streak, I was pretty much done. You right. know, I, I was done. And then the whole thing with Roman giving him the send off, I wish that would have been it. I really wish that would have been it. Yeah. WrestleMania has, has kind of been, uh, and, and actually, WrestleMania 30 wasn't even the best WrestleMania, if you uh, ask me, like I, maybe 30 to 33, maybe yeah. it was kind of like a little lackluster. We talked about this on the Turnbuckle Time Machine uh, podcast on, on the PFC network um, because there there's no emotional investment. Right. right? Yeah. And, you, and you look at this roster, you look at this lineup, and you're looking at these names on here, and it's, I mean, unless you are a diehard fan, there is not one or two names on here that really stand out for casual fans. Like, I need to tune in with this, with the exception of a few. And I feel like this is why they're opening up WrestleMania night one with this matchup. Ordinarily, traditionally, it would have probably been somewhere in the middle, if not towards maybe the main event slot, not the main event, but later in the show. But they're kicking off WrestleMania with the one guy that is kind of like the transitional, that that bridge between a right. generation before to here and now. John Cena is back, and he is going to challenge one of the brightest stars in WWE here right now for the United States Championship. It's Cena 
Austin Theory, Sean, what's what's your take on this? <laughs> well, reason why you're bringing in Cena is to build Theory, but I'm having a real hard time with this matchup because if Cena goes over on Theory, he has the potential to tie Ric Flair's record for U.S. Championship. Right. So I'm kind of toss up, but as far as I'm concerned, Theory is the future of the WWE. So my prediction is Theory. No Austin Theory is going to take it. Absolutely. Brian, what what do you think? Oh, Theory. Yeah. I mean, I could see Cena winning it and doing the open challenge and losing to one of the new people coming in. A surprise. A surprise. <laughs> but I honestly, I don't see why you'd have Theory lose at this point. You're trying to build his momentum. Q, I mean, how how big of a deal is it if Austin Theory is to beat John Cena in opening match? Because, you know, if, if you look at the history... And I, I hate to dive this far into it, but they usually start that show off with a big baby face <laughs> win. They're, you know, John Cena is one of the most polarizing guys in the history of WWE. But at this stage in his career, and especially with Austin Theory firing on all cylinders like he is, um, you know, a win over John Cena to kick off WrestleMania puts him... I mean, there is no working his way back. He is right. at the top of the card at this right, point, right? Right, right. Well, he is definitely the future. He needs to win this match. After the whole debacle with the briefcase and everything, they're building him back up. They built him back up pretty much. He needs this win, and I believe him having John Cena be on his resume have him have a defeated John Cena on his resume shows a lot of confidence that WWE have in him. Yeah. So I believe that they're pushing him to pretty much the top of the card because we're, we're looking possibly next year he could be in the main event. That's and, and that's absolutely right. We, you and I, and me and you, Brian, have and even I mean all of us have had convers I've had conversations with all of you guys about. The future of the business. Austin Theory, very much one one of those guys that should be at you know at this time next year. Like you said, he should be if not in the main event at the at you know the the, the upper part of the card. I would put yep. Montez Ford yep. of uh, the Street Profits, and I would put L.A. Knight in there if Agreed. if they would book them right. Yeah. And Walter. Um, now, the next match that we want to talk about here is, is, it's kind of controversial only because of the placement. Because at this point, we don't really know what match is closing out night one of WrestleMania on Saturday night, tomorrow night on Peacock. We know what, what's going to close out Sunday night. Right. Um, this match that, that we want to focus on right now, theoretically, by the way it was promoted is... This should be the main event of night one. Charlotte Flair, the most prolific women's wrestler in WWE. And I went on record a couple of years ago and I said, pound for pound, and it does not matter, Charlotte Flair is the best performer in professional wrestling, bar none. She is very controversial. She is very outspoken but she has earned that right. Yes. She is, without a doubt, the epitome of the women's division in world wrestling entertainment. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's true. She's going up against the Royal Rumble winner, Rhea Ripley of the Judgment Day, and the Royal Rumble, is whether it's a men's match or the women's match, the winner of that is supposed to get the main event shot yes. of WrestleMania. But the the contention comes this year. Yeah, Rhea Ripley won the Royal, Royal Rumble match, earns the title shot against Charlotte Flair, rematch from the pandemic mania. Yep. Um, so now they get to do this in front of a live crowd, 70,000 plus people in SoFi Stadium instead of the empty performance center. Um, Sean, I'll ask you first, man. Uh, Rhea Ripley, is this her time to really break out on her own? And do you think Charlotte Flair is ready to kind of pass that proverbial torch? Well, let's start the controversy now, because I already changed my pick. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rhea Ripley's got to dump Dom. It's got to happen. Yeah. I think what we're going to see is we're going to see Dom screw up. Cost Rhea, the, cost Rhea the match, and Charlotte Flair retains her championship. 
That I mean, it's th this is one of those toss-up matches, <laughs> Brian. Right? Because it, they could go either way with this. Yeah. Um. First off, didn't last year they the Royal Rumble winner not main event? Wasn't it Kevin Owens and Stone, Stone Cold? Cold? It's Stone Cold. Yeah. <clears throat> I said they kind of flipped it last year. I, I'm I'm gonna go Rhea. Because I think. Because I think a lot of stuff is going to be leading into like SummerSlam, and I think we're going to see. I might blow them out of my feet like later picks, but I think we might see Charlotte and Bianca at SummerSlam. In a unification match? No, I think it will be her. For her, okay. Yeah. Um, Charlotte Flair. Okay. Now, is she? I mean, we. Her resume speaks for itself, right? Yeah, it does. But she, nobody really performs better on a bigger stage. She has really a. a embodied the role, the term, the definition of superstar. Yeah. It's WrestleMania. Like she's come in on a helicopter before. Yeah, right. What what's it gonna be like tomorrow night when when she steps on to the biggest stage of the year against Rhea Ripley? Two things. Um uh, one, I'm not I'm not a big fan of the build to this match. And also I believe that Charlotte is pretty much miscast in this match. She's she's a natural heel. She even healed it up on SmackDown a little bit. They gave her the what treatment. She couldn't <laughs> handle it, you know? Uh, so uh, <laughs> she's a little miscast, but this this has got to be Rhea Ripley. I think this is her time. Uh, they're, 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 they're telling the story about that pandemic WrestleMania too much for her to lose this match, you know? Because now it seems like Will... Are they going to cool off their hottest woman? She's hot right now. Right. She's white hot. And I, I feel like if she loses to Charlotte, who fans naturally don't really like, it might cool her off just a little bit. It's a very good point because she is Charlotte Flair. I'm talking about pronouns. Um, she is very much a natural heel. That's where she's always performed at her best is when she – has been booed, right? Right, So I right. totally get it. We might see a flip-flop there. You, you know, know and fans, fans are going to choose in that match. You you hear Rhea get cheered right. nine yeah. times out of ten when she comes down. So, of course, Charlotte's already going to act the heel when she comes out at Mania. Yeah. Because she's going to have that grand diva entrance. I'm telling you, it's her it's entrances are just as big as what The Undertaker's were. I yeah. argue that all day long. She's going to come out. She's going to show her stuff. And she's going to be a star, just like she always has been. Rhea is going to go into another storyline because this whole thing with Dom has to end. It really has run, run yeah. its course. We'll talk about Dominic Mysterio here in a little bit. Uh, but before we do, let's talk about another match that we, there is going to be a split crowd reaction. <sighs> Seth freaking Rollins is going to go one-on-one -on -one with Logan Paul. And this match potentially could steal the show. On night one of WrestleMania. Seth Rollins, say what you want about him. He is one of the best professional wrestlers in the world right now. The man continues to reinvent himself. Yes. He continues to find ways to resonate with the fans. And then you got Logan Paul. <laughs> Logan Paul is becoming that polarizing figure yeah. here in WWE. Like, I had no idea who this dude was until he came to WWE. And at that point, his first few outings, I'm like, okay, so he did some training. But then he went into Saudi Arabia and had that match with Roman Reigns, and he had no business being as good in that match as he was. And I think that's what put pe what put him on the map. Right. This is not just your average celebrity that's coming in for a payday. This is a guy who gets it. This is a guy who wants to wants this to be a thing, aside from all of his YouTube stuff. And I understand the appeal. You're bringing all those eyeballs to WWE. Yep. As a traditionalist, Sean, where does Logan Paul fit on your radar? The guy's a monster. He's an absolute monster. I've never seen anyone come in so early, so quick, get such heat. Yeah. Um, this match here, I don't have a prediction. This is gonna be. These guys are gonna beat the living hell out of one another. You're gonna see a double count out because neither one of them is gonna gain any heat by beating beating the other one. Um, 
Seth Rollins has, this feud's gonna continue all the way through SummerSlam and beyond. This is double, double count out, double DQ. There is gonna be no winner in this match. What, what's your take on this, Brian? Oh man, I flip flop on this one. It, it, it's <laughs> over and over again. Right? Yeah. I mean, Logan Paul is at a point right now. If he now. was full, like a full time on that roster, I would say Logan Paul for sure. There's an internet rumor that he's signing a contract after this match. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they <laughs> signed Prime for their majoring. You know what? I'm going to go Logan Paul. I'll stick with my guns. Okay. All right. Those are some powerful guns, man. Where are you uh, at, man, you know what? I, I got to go Seth, man. I got to go Seth. Only because, you know, he had those losses against Cody. He's been losing on uh, PLEs, you know, a little bit too much for my flavor. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I, I want to see him beat the, the YouTube star, you know. Seth Rollins, possibly at the end of the year, once they separate those uh, world titles, he, he, he should be holding one of them. I totally agree. I, he, is one, he is one of those upper echelon guys. You don't need to be messing around with the United States Championship or the Intercontinental Championship. You look at what Seth Rollins has done at WrestleMania at this point. The heist of the century. You know, that's yeah, the one highlight. that is yeah. one of the highlights that you see that you have seen a lot. If you pay attention to WWE on social media or just wrestling in general leading up to this weekend, you've seen that clip more than once of him cashing in money in the bank and leaving WrestleMania um, with the World Heavyweight Championship. I mean, that's the greatest cash in. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so th- this is one of those, like like I said, this could be the match that steals the show on Saturday night at WrestleMania. That's only because Otis never got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about this six-woman tag team match that is going to take place at WrestleMania. You want to talk about, this is a, this is an interesting story. Yes, it is. And I feel like, all right, I get it. I understand. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it at <laughs> WrestleMania. There's a lot of potential with this. I feel like a lot of fans, more of a casual fans, are going to look at this match as like the popcorn match. It's time to get up and, and go get your popcorn to go, you know, to go pee pee. Or right, uh, what, yeah. whatever the case may be. Take a break. Um, Becky Lynch and Lee Duck, the, the reigning women's tag team champions, they're teaming up with Trish Stratus to take on uh, Bailey Eosky and, and Dakota Kai. Awesome talent in this match. Two Hall of Famers. Brian, what's your take on this one? This is another one where it, I, I could see it going either way. Man, I really want to say damage control, but man, I, all I keep hearing is how Bailey's gonna end up getting pinned, and they're gonna turn on her. See, and I, then the other thing is, is, all you hear is Trish is gonna turn heel. Right. That's yeah. that was. So it's be like, my point. when is it gonna happen? It's gonna happen that night. It's gonna happen raw the next day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Becky, Lita, and Trish is gonna take the win. I guess. I am a huge Dakota Kai fan. And on that level, I am on the polar opposite of Becky Lynch. Like if, if, oh, if, yeah, you are. If, if, <laughs> if, she loses, if she loses, I'm happy. Sean, what's, what's your take here? Real simple. You got two Hall of Famers and a potential Hall of Famer going up against some three girls that they got to build, three women they got to build. Tag team titles are not on the line. Uh, damage control goes over. And then we have our tag team match at Monday Night Raw where we're going to see the split between Becky and Lita. And okay. I like that. Yeah. I can see Makes that. Sense. Oh, that, that was, man, me and, me and Sean are on the exact same <laughs> page <laughs> on that one. That, that, yeah, yeah, I believe that that's exactly how it's going to play out. You might have turned me. I, I, I could see that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at Becky, Trish, and Lita don't need this win. They're bulletproof. They're bulletproof. But you got three. I mean, Bailey hasn't been winning <laughs> nothing. I mean, since this damage control thing started, they've done nothing but win the tag titles. <coughs> but Bailey has done nothing. So I believe you let damage control get this win and uh, boost them up a little bit. They, they, of the two teams, they need it the most for absolute sure. Because you look at 
Lita and Trish Stratus, and it's great, the whole nostalgia act of them coming back and being prominently featured um, is a big deal, and, and I can appreciate that, but they're not here for the long haul, whereas you know, the other three are, and those are the yeah. ones you really need to focus on. Becky Lynch is already made, you know, so it doesn't matter what, you know, it does not matter in the grand scheme of things. She could eat the pin on Saturday and turn around on Monday night and and win the women's title. I mean, that, that could happen. We've seen crazier things you happen. You want Becky Lynch to eat the pin, don't you? I do. <laughs> I, I, am, I am not a fan. I am not a fan. I know Eric Cherry is watching this, and he hates my guts right now, and that's perfectly fine. Um, listen, you look over the course of WrestleMania, and you look at Family Matter matches. The first one that comes up is our, is arguably the greatest opening match in WrestleMania history. Bret the Hitman Hart versus Owen Hart at WrestleMania yeah. 10. We've seen brother versus brother several times. We've seen it with the Hearts. We've seen it with the Hardy Boys. We've seen it over and over again. Yeah. Undertaker Kane. Undertaker, Undertaker Kane. Kane. Another great, another great yeah. example. But never before in the history of WrestleMania have we seen father versus son. That is going to happen on Saturday as a part of WrestleMania. The buildup for this was 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 a long one, uh, but you knew it was coming down to this. Rey Mysterio is yeah. going to step in the ring with his son, Dominic Mysterio. I am torn on this match. I, I like I'm glad that Rey is getting a WrestleMania moment. I you know he's being inducted into the Hall of Fame this weekend. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Dominic Mysterio, like they're doing everything they can to build this guy. He's part of Judgment Day. He's been prominently featured. This is the biggest stage that he's ever performed on. Sean, yes. what, what's your take here? Well, I already said that Dom's going to cost Rhea her, her title shot, and that's going to begin to fall Judgment Day. I don't think Judgment Day is going to exist after this. This match here I've actually been torn on because, you know, does Ray pass the torch on to his son so he carries on the Mysterio name? Or does Ray go out on a high note and retire on this? Do we see Damian Priest, who isn't even on the card, interfere in this match and potentially cause Ray to match? I don't know. Uh, all I know is this. I just don't like Dom. Ray Mysterio goes <laughs> over. <laughs> okay. All right. Brian? Um, yeah, I'm going to go Dominic in this one. I'm going to be, like, all judgment day. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 honestly, I feel like this should have been a retirement match for Ray. I mean, like it's WrestleMania. Yeah. You're putting your son over. You're going in the Hall of Fame. That may this one, you could not have a better note to end it on your career. Right. Could Cause, very well be that, though. I mean, if you if Dominic retires Ray, there's no more heat that you could possibly give him than that. And like, what a gift you could give your kid. Yeah, they, yeah. that's that's a great point, Q. Like, uh, there's not there hasn't there's a lot there's been a lot of second generation wrestlers, but how many have had the opportunity? especially on a stage like WrestleMania, where you can pass that torch to your own real-life flesh and right. blood. I didn't yeah. even take that in, into consideration until Brian said it, but that is a, that could be, this could be what this is. Yeah. Like, they're not going to bill it as a retirement <coughs> match, but everybody knows that Ray is going into the Hall of Fame later tonight. Yeah. Um, is, is this what this is, do you think? That would be nice. That would be very nice, but I don't think this. I don't think this is it. I believe that this is. I think. I don't think it's going to be over after WrestleMania. No. If I see a hair versus mask match at Backlash, <laughs> <laughs> that's a possibility. <laughs> but I believe in. Uh, they got the uh, the show in Puerto Rico. I was just going to say uh, that. Yep. I believe we're going to see Judgment Day, Legado del Fantasma. Uh, you got, you got your tag team matches, then you just kind of <coughs> continue it on from there. I don't believe it's going to be over because uh, Dominic has turned around on me. He's uh, He grew on me a little bit. I couldn't stand the little guy for the longest. But, man, he, his character work with the with the uh, the prison Dom gimmick, man, it cracks <laughs> me up, man. It's it's one of the best things on SmackDown, man. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm going to say... Uh, Dominic is going to take this one okay. because of Damian Priest. He's right. not going to get it clean. All right. Uh, another match that really hasn't got a whole lot of hype around it, and I understand why they they added this match on your uh, <coughs> four-corner tag team match. You're going to have 
Alpha Academy against the this Viking Raidings, or Raiders <laughs> against <laughs> uh, the Street Profits and the makeshift team of Braun Strowman and Ricochet. Uh, Sean and I were actually talking about this, this this match this morning, and he has a very unique <coughs> take on it. Sean, what what was your take on this four corner tag team match? Oh, here come the oh notes. man, here come the notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the notes on this one because when I wrote this, uh, it uh, okay. So what I said was, if uh, Braun Strowman could win the tag team titles with a fourth grader, <laughs> there should be no problem with this match, but. Uh, you have a problem because Montez Ford is a single star in the making. Yeah. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I'm really hoping that we see a turn by Angela Dawkins. Yeah. He is the Marty Jannetty of this team, yeah. but he needs to have some heat behind him. <coughs> and uh, and he's not that bad. I, I think you're going to see miscommunication. You're not going to see the turn right away here. Yeah. And, uh, Seeds planet. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, you got Otis. You know, he, he's going to go <laughs> off on his modeling career. So there's only one choice for this match, as far as I'm concerned, and it's the, the actual tag team that needs a bit of a push. And we're talking about the Viking Raiders goes over in this one. There is a lot of wow, potential yes. with these, with because you got three legit, in, in my opinion, three legit tag teams for WWE in here. Alpha Academy, the Street Profits, the Viking Raiders. Ricochet and Strowman, I don't put a whole hell of a lot of stock into. And I agree with the fact that Montez Ford is a future main event yeah. player. Is now the time, Brian, to pull the trigger on him? I think it's been time. Yeah. Like, we've talked about it over and over again. Right. I'd, I'd definitely like to see that split. Who's, who's, who's your take in this match? War, 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 Yeah. War. Viking can't Raiders. say that on WWE TV. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we're on Owen TV and go. not WWE TV. Yeah, I'm going to go Viking Raiders as well. Okay. Um, I know you're such a big Ricochet fan, but... Yeah, he's <laughs> like, I got, I, I have all of his merchandise. Yeah, <laughs> love the guy. <laughs> Q. I'm, I'm going Viking Raiders, and I, I definitely agree with the whole Street Profit take. Uh, Montez is is the next big thing with theory. That, that's a feud right there that can last for that. That's the John Cena Randy Orton feud all over again. Um, Braun, I, I gotta admit, Braun is doing his best work with Ricochet because there's nothing else that the guy can do right now. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just a big dude that just runs around the ring running people over. I mean, so this is the best thing he's got. Um, Alpha Academy is done. Uh, so yeah, Viking Raiders. Shush! Oh my God! <laughs> I'm going with the Alpha uh, Academy whoa. because I am a huge Chad Gable fan. Gross. I absolutely love that guy. I think Otis sucks, but Chad Gable <laughs> entertains me, and like, I would love to see him get a big win at WrestleMania. Uh, finally, the the last match that we're going to focus on in terms of night one here for WrestleMania, in my opinion, should be the main event. This should be the match that closes out WrestleMania on night one. It is the WWE Tag Team Championship match. In my opinion, Q, maybe I'm off my rocker here, but this is the most anticipated tag team title match, dare I say, in the last 20 years. Great. It is the culmination of a, about the, the storytelling, the bloodline, is very much the foundation of this. The Usos, are going to defend the undisputed tag team championship against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. We knew it was happening, but is it too little, too late, Sean? <laughs> well, number one, we all know I hate that term. It's time to pull the trigger because I'm telling you right now, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> this match, we're going to see Kevin Owens turn on Sami Zayn oh, because man. of the jealousy from the crowd reaction that Sami Zayn's been getting over Kevin Owens. It was pointed out on the KO show. Sami Zayn come out, got a huge pop, and Kevin Owens was sure to point that out to Sami. So not only that, I think not only does Kevin turn on Sami, Kevin Owens becomes part of the bloodline. Oh. If this happens, if this happens, I'm telling you right now, this will set up the main event for night two. Okay. Wow. Brian, what do you think? That was a lot to take in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm going to go completely opposite. I'm going to say Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. I think 
I mean, they built the storyline up. It's got to end that way. And how many times has Owens turned on Sammy already? I mean, isn't that? I mean, how many times has he turned on everyone? <laughs> right. It's what he does. But for one night only. <laughs> now, what if? They follow suit, and Sammy actually turns on Owens to re- rejoin the bloodline, and the whole thing was was a rue. Uh, I hope not. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't, <laughs> I mean, Sammy is hot, you know. Uh, but I, I, my take is I, I believe that Owens and uh, Zayn win, but the turn will happen, but I believe that's going to be down the line. They're all about first, like the first time women main evented WrestleMania. Why don't we have a first tag team championship as a main event? I, I totally agree. And yeah. I mean, as far as the build going into the, into this, this is the story this to the be told. Deal, yeah. Now, like we mentioned earlier in the broadcast here, we talked about the Charlotte Flair Rhea Ripley match of that, you know, should that be the main event because Rhea won the Royal Rumble. But in terms of story and build up, and like you said, you weren't a big fan of the build up of the SmackDown women's title match. How many other people weren't either? Yeah. But everybody, if you are a WWE fan, you are invested in the Bloodline storyline. And the story with Sami Zayn, his involvement, and now Kevin Owens, longtime best friends. It's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. You know, it's, from top to bottom, it is a stacked card on night one. What we're going to do right now is run a quick timeout. We will be back with more of this very special WrestleMania preview edition of the Klaus and Q Show right after this. Runners and walkers of all ages are invited to come out to the 2023 Dragon Dash 5K on Sunday, May 21st. Check-in opens at 7.30 a.m. with the race starting promptly at 9 a.m. The Dragon Dash begins and ends at the Orient Center with participants heading out on the scenic Pollyann Trail toward Civic Center Park and back again. All participants will receive a medal as they cross the finish line. For more information, call 248 3910 extension 3500 or visit orionparks.com. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to this very special edition of the Klaus and Q Show live on ON TV. Jason Klaus, Quadell Edwards. We are talking all things WrestleMania. We are kicking off WrestleMania weekend. It starts tomorrow night live on Peacock. But before we get there, the WWE is going to induct its newest class of the Hall of Fame Q. We talked about it before we came on the air here. It's kind of a weird class this year, right? It is weird. Very small. I'm, I mean, I'm okay with small classes, but uh, I don't like the setup of it, you know, like like they had in past years. It's And it seemed kind of like a rush job. They didn't start announcing them until uh, like a couple of weeks ago. Right. It was kind of weird to me. It, I, and I feel like time constraints is a reason why they condensed the class because, Sean, I think you'll agree, Hillbilly Jim ruined that for everybody, right? When oh, the long know, was his 35-minute induction <laughs> speech. Yeah, he, I remember them like, going up to him and like, hey, yeah. <laughs> time, to, time to take it home. Right, no, right. Nope, nope. Uh, but let's run down the, the inductees. It's headlined by Rey Mysterio. We talked about him a little bit ago with, with his match with his son, Dominic. You're also going to see the great Muda, Andy Kaufman, Stacy Keebler, and referee Tim White is going to get the Warrior Award. And I realize a lot of people don't know necessarily who Tim White was or what his contributions to WWE was. It's far beyond what he did in his role as, as a referee. Do some research. Go on the Google machine. Look what this man has done, and you'll see why he is very, very deserving of the Warrior Award. They're being inducted here later tonight. Well, the, the, 
I mean, Tim White is absolutely deserving. He was the right hand of Andre the Giant. That's it. Yeah. And I'm really upset that the Andre the Giant <laughs> Memorial Battle Royal isn't on WrestleMania this year, but Same, he's on SmackDown yeah. tonight. It's right. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. We, we were talking about that on the way down here. Um, I picked him up, and we came down here t together. We were talking about... Um, you know, the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, why is that not on the main card when you're talking about, I mean, it's Andre the Giant. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, let's, let's look at the matches that they do have on tap for night two, Sunday night, SoFi Stadium in Hollywood, California. Uh, Brock Lesnar is, the, I mean, the... <laughs> I'm so torn on this match. On paper, <laughs> it should be, you know, the battle of the Goliaths here. Uh, there's a lot of room for error in this, yeah. in, in my opinion. Brock Lesnar goes one-on-one -on -one with Omos. Omos. Uh, Brian, what's what's your take here? Uh, my take is you can see where Vince might have been sprinkled into this card. Yeah. <laughs> this seems like a Vince match more than anything. It's going to be Brock. I mean, he's not going to take a loss. He's definitely going to be like, no way I'm going to lose to this guy. But if he did, Sean, how, how big is that? Well, if Omos goes over on Brock, yeah. I, that's what I want to have happen. I want to see an unstoppable giant in the WWE. I want them to build a monster heel that we have a babyface champion to try to topple. Didn't he already lose to Bobby, though? I, I think so. Well, you WrestleMania last year. So well, they, they, they can hit the reset button. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is the reset button. Yeah. Right. Um, but no, I really think that Omos, or Omos, as Brock calls him, is nothing but F5 fodder. And I think this match is over in under three minutes, uh, a few Germans and an F5, and it's Brock Lesnar with his hand in the air. What's, what's your take here, Q? All right, I'm going to go far left field on this one. Okay, uh, let's, I'm going to take the scenic route. I believe <laughs> <laughs> that we can have a nice surprise by... Uh, Omas winning this match with the help of a reformed Hurt Business. That's the only way yes. I want to see this happen. And honestly, mm -hmm. I don't want to see him in the Hurt Business, though. Well, he's going to be the muscle next to some other muscle. Yeah. <laughs> the Hurt Business, I mean, the plug was pulled on them way too soon. They had so much potential. And it, and it put guys like Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander on, back on the national map. Yep. Because they're so super talented, especially Shelton Benjamin. Like, why that guy is not more prominently featured, I don't know. I know we're going off on a sidebar here. But, um, like, I, it's got to be Brock Lesnar here, in, in, in my opinion. Like, I... If you were going to use him to build Omos, I totally get that. But at the same time, it's Brock Lesnar. <laughs> you know, and that's just all. Oh, that's all you got to say. Um, real quick, they have a they have another four corner tag match scheduled for WrestleMania. This one on Sunday night. This one involves four women tag teams. Liv Morgan is teaming up with Raquel Rodriguez. They're going to take on Natalya Neidhart and Shotzi. They're taking on Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler and Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville round this out. I feel like we're going to be pretty unanimous uh, with the outcome of this, so we'll just go around the horns. Brian, we'll start with you. Uh, my prediction is this will be the fastest match of the night, both nights, and it's going to be Ronda and Shayna Baszler. Yeah, I'm going with the women mantars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going with the legit fighters. How can, I mean, how could you not? Right. You know, like, of the teams, if they were going to do something with somebody else, yeah. I would prefer it to be Sonia and Chelsea Green. They're entertaining. Um, but the um, woman tars, I, I believe, <laughs> yeah. are, is, I mean, that's the way you got to go. And Brian, I can totally see this being, <coughs> this being the fastest. Yeah, squash. It should be. If you want to build up the women's the tag division, squash them. You need somebody strong in it, and yeah. there you go. I mean, look at the graphic. Right. You can't go against those faces. <laughs> <laughs> um, another match that has a lot of anticipation in terms of potential. This could be one of those matches that steals the show uh, in night two on Sunday night. The Raw women's <coughs> title is going to be on the line. Asuka, who, well, I mean, one of the best performers in the business, 
uh, won the Elimination Chamber uh, back in Montreal. She's coming to Los Angeles. She has a match with the flag bearer for the Raw brand, current champion Bianca Belair. Q, I'll start with you. This is a tough one. Uh, I think I got this one. Okay. The week is build for, for, for sure, though. This build has been awful. They could have did a lot more with this. And I believe this is gonna might stretch on beyond WrestleMania. But uh, I'm going to go Bianca. She's going to go, what is it, 3-0 yeah, at three. WrestleMania? Oh, you so they're gonna, you thinking they're going to build her a little streak, do you? Yeah, she got a little streak going, you know. She might be the only one with the, and you, Honestly, <coughs> Oscar got a streak going, too. Yeah. <laughs> so she's like, she'll be 0-5 if she loses this. That's Oof. a good point. Good point. So, I believe it's it. Um, I think Bianca's lost a lot of her fire. Um, they needed to build Asuka to build Bianca, make her a more prominently featured champion, give her a big win. So, especially with her husband Montez, I know he's going to go to singles route. So, I mean, yeah. they're going to be the number one power couple in the WWE, yeah. Bianca Belair. Okay, Brian? See, they're the number one power couple that I'd like to see in the Hurt Business. What? Wow. Oh, he hmm. comes out <laughs> just reshuffle. Here we go, left field there. again. <laughs> <laughs> so, I I think Bianca's gonna pull it off. I really hope we don't see the hair whip to the choking on the mist, which I can totally see happening. Yeah. yeah. But I also think that this also has potential to be in the match. Yeah, uh, the match so of the too. WrestleMania. Now don't forget, Kyrie Sane is a free agent now. I, uh, a good point. Good point. Dude, I would love to see those two tag back up. I said earlier in the show that I felt like Charlotte Flair was the best pound for pound all around performer in WWE. Well, in professional wrestling, period. Bianca Belair has the potential to step up to that plate. Like, I, we have not seen her best potential yet. You know what I mean? We have not seen her best days. She is the the champion on Monday Night Raw for the for the women, and that's great. But we haven't seen her best stuff yet. I feel like on Wrestle on the stage of WrestleMania, and against somebody as accomplished as Asuka, you're going to see it could be one of the greatest championship matches in women's wrestling history. Yes, with this particular match, another <laughs> match that has a whole lot of interest, and like they keep. This is one of those rivalries that this structure was made for. You are going to see inside Hell in a Cell, the Rated R Superstar Edge is going against Finn Balor, not just Finn Balor, the Demon Ooh. Finn Balor. Brian, we talked about this back and forth. How important was it for them to incorporate the Demon into this match? Oh, huge. I mean, because we have potential of Brood versus Demon. I'm like, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, and I keep hearing rumors. Are we gonna see a purple Hell in a Cell? Oh, I hadn't. I hadn't. Heard I, it. I, I, yeah, I, I think it's. I think it went red. classic. Oh. We're going classic. Did, 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 yeah, can you see it? Pictures, oh, yeah. Gross. I would love to see it purple. I don't, so amazing. Red. I don't want a no. red. No. The, the, I hated the red. Yeah. It was a distraction. Sean, what, what, what do you think with this one? I think you see Edge go over on Finn, and the reason why that is, uh, like I said, uh, Judgment Day. I, I, it's going to disintegrate here. Um, I think Finn, you're going to see him uh, turn more babyface, especially with the demon uh, character. Uh, Edge, I think you you won't see Edge very much longer. I think he's going to skip away into Happy Canada Land with uh, yeah. Beth Phoenix, and you know that's the last we're going to hear of him. But you got to have a feud between Finn Balor and uh, Damian Priest. The, on paper, that mm. makes. Yeah. I mean, that could be Sounds what sets good. up for either either around the United States title if they decide to elevate Austin Theory, um, <laughs> Balor and and Damian Priest on paper make for a very intriguing matchup. Uh, another intriguing matchup is this triple threat that we've got booked for the Intercontinental <laughs> Championship. That I mean, it, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'm going Balor. Are you? I'm going Balor. Okay. Edge goes away. Balor uh, <laughs> gets elevated. And uh, I, I, I believe that, uh, oh, man, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with Balor. Okay. All right. My bad. My <laughs> bad. Uh, this, this match here, the Intercontinental Championship triple threat match, Drew McIntyre and Sheamus are the challengers. Gunther 
is the defending champion. As far as hard hitting action goes, Sean, where, what is the potential with this one? Does this have the potential to be the greatest intercontinental title match since Savage and Steamboat? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I know in my heart of hearts who I want to win this match. I really want McIntyre to win because he was the heavyweight champion. Didn't get to hold the belt in front of a live studio audience or a live arena audience right. uh, because of COVID. But because of WWE booking and because they want to push the hell out of Gunter, uh, Gunter's going over in this match. Uh, how big is the storyline with Sheamus and his attempt to become a one a hit to win his first Intercontinental Champion? Does that justify his in involvement in this match? Yeah, I, I think he's going to win it. Do you? Yeah, I think uh, this is a great time to take the belt off of Gunther easily, where you don't diminish him because it's a three-way match. You can push him up to heavyweight status. I think Sheamus takes it. I think you build another small feud between him and Drew because I think we got a pay-per-view coming up in the UK, don't we? Yeah, I think so. I and I think like you I have, I see you them matching those two up there. So yeah. is now the time to elevate Gunther? And Brian br brings up a good point. We can get the, the Intercontinental Championship off of him without him eating the pin. He can still become that, that dominant force in the heavyweight title to p uh, pitcher. Puts two established names around the, the prestige of the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah. And even though both uh, McIntyre and Sheamus are former world champions, it does add credibility to what has been one of the more, more prestigious titles in all of WWE, right? Absolutely. Uh, Sheamus definitely, this is his time to get this win. I know this is not, pull, I'm going to pull the trigger on this one. Yeah, we gonna say well, they could go ahead and pull the trigger on Sheamus, let him get the win uh, before he can get that that title that he never held. And I believe he pins Drew, and this might be the beginning of a heel turn for Drew. I think so. That could I feel like now is the time Drew McIntyre and like I appreciate everything that he's done and like I was so glad that he did win the WWE title a couple of years ago. But like you said, it was. Everything was done in an empty performance center or inside yeah, yeah. the Thunderdome with with the video screens. Um, he's kind of run his course in terms of you know being a viable baby face. And a fresh I've, coat I, of paint. I have always felt like he has done his best work as that monster heel. So yeah. this could be very well be the time for that. But let's talk about the time that it all comes down to. It is the main event for WrestleMania 39. This Sunday, live on Peacock or the WWE Network, everywhere else in the world, the undisputed Universal Champion Roman Reigns puts the title on the line against the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. <laughs> I'm trying to be diplomatic here. Uh, this is your main event for WrestleMania. Cody yeah. Rhodes, the prodigal son, returns, wins the Royal Rumble. He is now going one-on-one -on -one with the longest reigning champion in the last 25 years. 900 plus days almost at this point for Roman Reigns. Is this the night he finally is toppled and is Cody Rhodes the guy, Q? I feel like you and me are going to fight. Yeah, we are. Because <laughs> Cody is going to go ahead and take those titles. It's, it, I mean, three years, that's a long time. It's a, <laughs> it's a changing of the guard. You know, Triple H is pretty much setting his roster up the way he wants it to be set. And I believe he was waiting until after WrestleMania to get things placed to the way he wants them to be placed. So, uh, I mean, if it's not Cody, then you're going to ask that question, who? Sean, what, what do you think? I'll answer your question. It's going to be anybody but Cody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look here. Here's my prediction, okay? First of all, Cody Rhodes is being shoved down our throat. What has he done to earn this title shot? He came in at number 30 at Royal Rumble and won. 30. You want to show me something? Come in at number one, and then I will give you your opportunity at the heavyweight title. Be a Rhea Ripley. <laughs> yeah. See, <laughs> what, what I'm really thinking you're going to see here is you're going to see our tag team champions, the Usos, come out, cause a little bit of a distraction on Cody. Uh, referee's going to be distracted. And I got this wild prediction. We're going to see why Cody's distraction, distracted. Going to have 
a Viper slide into the ring, hit him with the RKO. Roman oh. Reigns goes over with the pin. Now we have to build for SummerSlam with Cody versus Randy Orton. Now, who does Roman Reigns take on next? I don't know. Roman Reigns is the most dominant champion we've had in years. I, with the way the bloodline's going, I would love to see him carry the belt as long as San Martino. But, is, you know, that possibly, it, it isn't a possibility. Right. But Roman Reigns goes over on Cody Rhodes. I, I can totally see that. <laughs> Brian, what's, what's your take here? God, I hope so. I don't want Cody to be champ, but I feel like that's what they're doing. Like you said, they're shoving him down our throats, just like they used to do with Roman Reigns. Yeah. 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 Until yeah. they found a spot for Roman Reigns to actually thrive. Mm -hmm. I think too. Cody's going to win it. I don't want it to happen. I, the only thing that m gives me any doubt is I can't believe they're going to get him this close to 1,000 days. And they wouldn't give him the 1,000 days to join that club. Right. Well, and another thing, too. I mean, really think about it. If Cody Rhodes goes over for the w, you know, Universal titles or whatever. What does that say about AEW? It says that their champion was better than the WWE champion, if you want to get political. Right. You know what I mean? So, I mean, look what they did to his dad when Dusty first came into the WWF. You know, made him the common man, made him wear the big yellow spots. They, yeah. they kind of turned him into a joke with a manager of Sapphire. Mm -hmm. Now, Dusty being the worker he is, he persevered and he got over with the fans. Huge. Yeah, WWF, WWE Creative has a, a, a history of making mockeries of people, champions from other promotions. Now, I'm not going to say they're going to do that with Cody, but I definitely don't think it's Cody's time to be a uh, champion yet, despite all his stories about Dusty. I, I totally agree, and I, I felt like, I, like I've been paying close attention to the build for this match, their promos and things of this nature. I appreciate what Cody Rhodes has brought to the business in terms of going out Un, from under the WWE umbrella, going out and making a name for himself. He helped launch AEW and all of that stuff. Very commendable, but now he's back here in WWE, which is fine. And I, I, I can appreciate the story, but you're talking about the most dominant champion that we've seen, in, I mean, since Hulk Hogan. You know what I'm saying? In terms yeah. of longevity, uninterrupted title reigns, Roman Reigns is um, is the guy, and I just can't believe that after everybody that he has gone through, everybody that he has had these amazing matches with, that it could be Cody Rhodes that is the one that takes him off the mountain. Who do I think, if not Cody? Gunther. I feel like Gunther is going to be, be. Could yeah. be the, he gives him a viable challenge on paper. Cody Rhodes? is not that guy for me. I understand I will probably be wrong when the final bell rings on Sunday night. We could be seeing a new Universal Champion. I really hope the hell not. I just want to make a point. I, I bought the new WWE 2K23 uh, game. Me too. <laughs> okay, when you're going through it, John Cena, okay, I, I'm going to go over here with this. John Cena makes it a point to say that he has never beat Roman Reigns. What if John Cena goes over for the U.S. title and we're setting up for Roman Reigns versus John Cena? I would be okay with that. I, I would be okay with that, for sure. Because John Cena is a more vi viable challenge to Roman Reigns than, than Cody Rhodes is to me, um, even at this stage in, in Cena's career. Uh, so, real quick, as we uh, you know, get ready to put a bow on this episode, we'll go around the horn here. What's the one, the, what is the one match you're most lo looking forward to? Brian, we'll start with you. Oh, wow, way to start with me. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> oh, man. If I had to pick one, oh, man, I'm, I'm stuck between the Hell in the Cell and the tag team, men's tag team match. Okay. The, the Usos against yep. Sane is, okay. Are you shot? It's, I'm... Most invested in uh, Roman and Cody. As it should be, right? Because yeah, that is I feel the like main it's event. Biggest letdown for me. A lot of people do. Right. Q. Um, I got to go with the uh, Triple Threat Intercontinental Title Match, man. It's going to be hard hitting. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of scars in that match. Right. Uh, I find myself being more interested in the tag team championship match as well. So it's going to be, either way, it's going to be a weekend full of fun, excitement, thrills, spills, chills, all the other ills. <laughs> I, 
I can only run so much. I'm not Dr. Seuss here. Uh, but be that as it may, it starts tonight, later on tonight, on your, you can check your local listings. Uh, for SmackDown, they will have the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. The Hall of Fame induction ceremony takes place at 10 p.m. over on Peacock. And then tomorrow night, uh, the kickoff show is at 6 o'clock, both Saturday and Sunday nights. And the live uh, pay-per-view telecast starts at 8 um, over on Peacock and the WWE Network. Uh, for our great friends, Brian Balf and Sean Grugel, for my tag team partner, uh, Claudel Edwards, we thank you so much for tuning in for this very special edition of the Klaus and Q Show. And we will see you right back here next month with the Klaus and Q Show live on ONTV.